comment time! Xantar writes, how did you get that powder, Griff? And what kind of powder is it? Okay, if you're thinking it's crack, it's not crack. I wouldn't waste crack like that. That powder was powdered sugar, which I used mostly because I didn't want to use gold bond again, but also because I wanted to see if it was possible for me to be even sweeter than I already am. What was really fun was going around town after doing yesterday's video and asking if anybody wanted to lick my sweet, sweet beard. Surprisingly, I only got a few takers. Something else that I need to say about yesterday's video, I realized that by making a video entirely about back to school, I'm only actually further serving to remind people of the inevitability of school's fast approach. In my attempt to lessen the blow for those of you imminently school-bound, I only managed to break into your reverie, to pop your bubble of blissful ignorance. I apologize for doing this, butt-kickers, and I apologize again for doing it just now by making it my pre-intro monologue. Good afternoon, butt kickers. It's July 26, the 207th day of 2011, which means that 22 years ago today, a federal jury indicted Robert T. Morris Jr. for releasing his Morris worm, which made him the first person to be prosecuted under the 1986 Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. You're gonna do time, Robbie. Hard time. You're looking at 16, maybe 17 days of community service. And that's not all, Robbie. You dirt. You scum. You're also looking at a pretty hefty fine, my man. Maybe even totaling half of a semester tuition at your alma mater, Cornell. I guess if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. But when your crime is inconveniencing people, I guess the time really isn't that bad. I've been struck with a few viruses in my time, which I cleaned up with only a modicum of turmoil. Although, admittedly, when I was going through it, I'd sure have liked to see the creator of the virus taken out back and shot. I guess creating a virus is just one of the punishable forms of douchebaggery out there. Because, I mean, really, why else would anyone create a virus? I can think of no other reason than just to be a pain in the butt. Virus creators are nerds, which means they've probably never had a profound romantic or quasi-sexual encounter before. Sure, he's smart, really quite preternaturally smart, but even the promise that his brains will someday make him the ruler of all the attractive, albeit stupid people in his vicinity does not quench his thirst to be the ruler of them now. So he does some research, notices some security holes in some programs, finds ways to exploit them, sprinkles in a little math, and voila, a virus is born. He sits at his computer, wringing his hands and laughing, before reaching for his nasal spray. My major problem with viruses is that they're all mean-spirited, all inconvenient. I say someone needs to create a nice virus. As a matter of fact, let's avoid even calling it a virus. Let's call it contagious happiness. Our contagious happiness could provide computer users everywhere with pop-ups that complement the user on a variety of flattering axes. Our contagious happiness could, for example, subliminally provide users with comforting stimuli, like flashing a quick image of a rainbow, or of their enemies lying dead. Our contagious happiness could even transform computers into the girl of the user's dreams, thereby eliminating all further virus creation. The sky's the limit, butt kickers. Let's get infecting. Until tomorrow, he's Griff. And he's still talking.